Hello, everybody. Hello, Mike. Hello, Martin. Hey, we s seem to got it all sorted. Actually, you have. So well done on your side. Uh, are you well? I'm keeping well, thank you very much. You? Good. Well, I, I think I have got a cold. I'm all bunged up, and um, so if I sound a bit husky, that that's what it might be. So, obviously, a lot going on. We've been trying for the last so many days to get this working. <laughs> Unfortunately, mm. we've been so lucky. But um, third time lucky. So here we go. So there is a lot going on um, with the coronavirus. A lot of services have been stopped. I'm sure you'll fill us in in a minute. But um, should we first talk about the cases uh, in the Buckinghamshire area? The latest tally I've got is 147 cases in Buckinghamshire. Sadly, we've had another increase today and a big one. It's now 195. Oh, okay. And that is the biggest daily increase we've had. Uh, and that matches what's going on nationally. So um, it seems we're very much in the thick of it still. The cases haven't really started slowing down. So there is still more work to be done. Oh, it sounds like it. Is there um, any fatalities from the Buckinghamshire area? Or... The I'm not aware. Uh, I've, I'm, anecdotally, I've been made aware of a number of, of cases that have been reported, but I'm not aware if uh, if anyone has passed away as a result. Hopefully not. But Hopefully not. You never know. It, obviously, you know, sorry if anybody has. Um, so that's a, that's a massive jump since the 26th of the 1st, so 26th of, of March. Um, we've gone from basically 59 when we started obviously chatting to 195 as of today which is a shame it, it is but it's very much the, the pattern that we've been seeing in other countries the curve does climb very very quick, quickly before it starts to flatten off um, so as I say we're, we're still in the stage where we need to keep alert, we need to keep following the rules and doing as much as we can to uh, to self-isolate and uh, make sure that the, the spread is contained as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying. I, mean, I have noticed quite a lot of cars out and people walking. I've got to admit, over the last few days, my daughter does work in Halfords. I'm a bit surprised at Halfords, actually. They're doing, like, half shifts, which to me is a little bit like, mm. why are you doing that? Really keep one, you know... One load on one shift, you know, and alternate it. But I'm a bit annoyed, but she is a key worker. And I know they're needed for, obviously, NHS stuff and, and for people who need stuff done for their cars and stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I have noticed quite a lot of cars out there. So I do think people are, obviously, going to get food. But when I'm turning up at, for instance, 9.30 in the morning, I'm actually seeing, like, Tesco's all blocked out. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's quite impressive. Is, are they, you know, are they obeying? And obviously all these other cars that are going past me, they're not turning off, for instance, to Marks and Spencer's, which mm. is also Tesco's, um, a couple of others. Where are they going? That's, that's also another big thing. Yeah, I do wonder whether everyone has got the message clear, clearly enough. I mean, some of those people will be key workers or shopping for vulnerable individuals um, but it does I go out for a run or a cycle ride once a day and the streets have obviously been a lot lot quieter than usual both in terms of cars and pedestrians but it uh, it still does surprise me slightly the number of people you see that seem to have somewhere to go um, even when we're being told keep those journeys to an absolute minimum uh, yeah I, I do think I don't think it's people don't know they do or probably don't care I think that's something we need to kind of target I mean I did get followed by the police a couple of days ago taking my daughter to work um, I didn't even know they were behind me to be fair it was it was one of those things I I, mm. I pulled up dropped off and they were right next to me so obviously they'd see me dropping off a key worker because she was in a uniform and I thought oh that was, that's interesting so they are keeping their eyes out on people they are they are vigilant, and my cat's just coming. You can tell I'm at home. <laughs> my cat's gone on my lap. Um, you can tell that they are literally will pull you over if they do feel that you're not actually making a important journey, shall we say? Yeah, and rightly so. And I, 
I've heard that people in vehicles and on foot have been asked where they're going, what the purpose of their journey is. I think the police have probably got things they would rather be doing than enforcing that, but hopefully that gets the message through to people and they will think twice or think more than twice before making an unnecessary journey. Okay, sorry, I was, I was smiling there because my cat keeps on walking across my lap. It's like she wants to be <laughs> on the screen, so I do apologize. But um, obviously, welcome from home, as they say, the wonders of it all. So yeah, so, so yeah. I know the police. I mean, I'll, I'll probably like to get the here she goes again. I'd like to get the constable um, on or the chief. I don't know, um, and, and chat with them to see what they're actually doing and how many people have been a problem because there's obviously been communications in in the mainstream media with regards to them threatening the police people who get obviously pulled over and stopped for whatever they're doing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There are we've heard people today hanging around in play parks that are supposed to be closed to the public. You have that, closed them as well, haven't you, the play parks? They, they have been closed, but people have mainly uh, older kids and teenagers have got into play parks and then smaller children walking past with their parents who've been told we can't use the play parks are asking the question, why are there people in there? So it's giving a very confusing message when the message needs to be as clear as possible. Let's all follow these rules. If we stick to them for a while, we, well, we have to, otherwise it will get worse and last longer. We talked about this the other day when the commas was pretty bad, but uh, this is the thing, isn't it? If we don't stay in, if we don't try and keep it all down to a minimum, we could actually be in lockdown for a lot, lot longer. Yeah, and it's a really tough thing to do. I feel a bit stir crazy having been in my house for a week and a half. Um, but I've been we... and a half weeks. I was in a week isolation before this was happening, as in the lockdown. Wow. Because there was an incident, and it was like, okay, well, I'll withdraw myself from, you know, the public just to make sure, you know, I don't have anything. So actually, I'm sure there's mm. a few people out there who actually adhere to the advice and actually did self outside so you know it's basically coming up to three weeks for me so that that is quite tough it, it's not our it's not our natural human way of, of being we like to socialize we like to Definitely. we like to share difficult times with each other in a time of crisis we like to reach out to each other and that's the one thing that, that we can't be doing at the moment so it's yeah. very challenging the reaching out point, that's another interesting part. Again, we discussed this the other, the, on, on one of the other broadcasts that didn't come to fruition. But dropping stuff off for my girlfriend, obviously she's behind a, you know, behind a window. And you do, you know, we all like to cuddle and reassure people, but we can't do that. Mm. We're literally dropping it off and going. And it, and, and it is hard. And I do understand that people out there can... We all need that contact, don't we? It is, it is part of our human nature. So... People do need to resist, you know, especially if you're, especially if you're dropping off for grandparents as well. That's a, another big thing. You can pass something on, you know, always make sure you wash your hands, stay within the two metre, well, without, outside the two metre rule. Um, there's quite a lot that I can see as time progresses. I mean, I think we've still got another two weeks or week, one and a half weeks before it gets reassessed on whether or not we're still going to be in lockdown. Mm -hmm. But for what it looks like, it, I think it might be a little bit longer than... Week and a half. I think people have got to prepare for it being somewhat longer. Um, I don't know, I don't have any inside information, but the, the three week point that the Prime Minister announced was to review the situation. It doesn't mean it's necessarily coming to an end. And just talking about really difficult situations, I was talking to someone I know this morning whose uh, grandparent passed away yesterday not from coronavirus, from other causes, but they've now got really difficult decisions to make because you can only have five people at a funeral. So who are the family members who will be able to attend and who are the ones that will have to be left to get together and mourn at a later date and they don't know how far in the future that will be. So uh, there were some really tough things going on out there. There is, I mean, yesterday was my uncle's funeral, uh, God rest his soul. He, he didn't 
die of coronavirus either. But um, his funeral was in Coventry, and I couldn't travel to it, obviously, for the restrictions that are, that are here. Um, and it is sad. It is hard. And you know how you deal with it in your days, you know, with your mental health, I suppose. I mean, that's something we need to also look into people's mental health states, making sure that they're staying active, keeping them, their brains obviously active as well. But it is hard, it is hard when there is, you know, there is a death and what do you do? I mean, it's four people in Coventry, you're saying it's five people in the Buckinghamshire area. But that is quite, that's hardly anybody, isn't it? To be fair, that's... Mm -hmm. And is that is that for the communal aspect? Obviously we don't want too many people turning up there um, and spreading the virus. Is that why it's been set at five? I think that's that's national government guidelines for any necessary gathering of people. Obviously, things like weddings and christenings can't happen at all at the moment. But things that have to happen, such as funerals, uh, the limit is five people. And I think that includes the the priest or whoever's officiating. So. Uh, so only for relatives, I believe. Okay, that, now that makes sense then with Coventry's line. So obviously it must be obviously the priest or whoever's given the service, mm. plus the four family members. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Also, the the um, cemeteries um, are they open at the moment or are they closed? Somebody did ask. The Town Cemetery, which is run by the town council, is still open. Is so open? Uh, that's one of our key services, and obviously burials are still required. Um, our staff are, are working hard to provide a, you know, a sympathetic and um, a, a, a service that um, enables people in, a, in an already stressful situation, made even more so by the current restrictions, to give their loved one something of a reasonable send-off although it wouldn't be what anyone would have wanted in normal situation. Yeah, uh, normal situations, of course. So the cemetery is open, but obviously not for visits. No, no, just you can't just wander around and, and take a walk in the cemetery. Um, I mean, obviously, people need to go out and get exercise and, and use open spaces. And uh, fix some, some parks are are remaining closed, so that limits the, the the opportunities that people get to exercise, and and it has meant that people in the in areas have been crowded together more than they should be. So um, it's all about finding different ways of, of doing things, and just really applying a bit of thought before you go out there. Is is this likely to create a difficult situation? One of those things we don't think about for half a second in normal conditions but suddenly every little aspect of life needs an extra thought before we go ahead with it yeah it is weird i mean i'm just thinking in my head you know apologies again you know people really do need to pay respects you know and they obviously if if they do lose somebody obviously visiting the cemetery and obviously as part of lockdown i would expect like you just said there is no visiting but i'm sure people probably will try and visit and is there any is it overseen by anybody at all, or is it literally the gates are opened and then closed at a certain time? I, I don't actually know if the gates are completely closed other than when a burial is going on. Um, I will check in with our officers that, that deal with the burial side of, of the council business and confirm that to you. Okay, we'll, we'll put that up on our next broadcast. Okay then. Um, okay. Again, thanks for doing this. It's really, really appreciated. Um, let's have a look. Oh, today, sorry. I was just looking at my notes. <laughs> Big one. It's now one council, isn't it? Except in Milton Keynes have their own one, I think. Is, is it today's Yep, today? so the rest of Buckinghamshire, um, as of today, is under one council called Buckinghamshire Council. So the, the old confusion about do I phone... Bucks County Council or Aylesbury Vale Council to get my problem resolved. Uh, there is one point of contact, although the town council still exists and parish councils in other areas that perform some of the smaller services, 
but the main focus of attention is, is the new Buckinghamshire Council from today. Ah, so congratulations for that all happening and still continuing on and amalgamating all the services. I mean, that's, I'm, a, I'm a big massive fanfare if we could do it, but obviously we can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> Martin Tett, uh, is it Martin Tett? He's the guy who's obviously on YouTube explaining all the things that are going on with the county council, well, sorry, the Buckinghamshire Council now. Is that correct? That's right, yep. Yeah. Martin is doing a, a daily, I think it's pretty much daily video blog. And it's going out on YouTube. I do have a just, link. Um, I'm just gonna. Have we got a link to that? I've got a little thing. I'm just gonna pop up on the screen. Um, I just need to make sure I don't cut your sound out. But I'm just gonna pop it up so people can see what it kind of looks like. Or well, one of the, the ones I did look at the other day when he was speaking to Dr. Jane O'Grady, which is director of um, Bucks Health, I believe. There we go. People can see if you're on YouTube, that's what it looked. Just look up Martin Tet T E double T, I believe. I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that on your screen, Mike? Yes, I did. Yeah, I've been watching those blogs. Uh, they're very informative. They give pointers to where people can find help, advice, and what services are available. And I think what's happening at the moment, right from national government down to all the local councils, we are all working together. Party politics has been completely put to one side for the moment. Um, this is bigger than any of us and we've got to work together to tackle it together we yeah uh, i'm glad party politics has taken a sideline and you know there's no time for arguing in, in this scenario is there it's let's all concentrate on the one thing um moving on about well, actually martin tet with i mean he's on his te double t isn't it if i'm right that's correct yeah yeah that is correct. Right, okay um, so I've also got no parking charges. That was another thing I was looking at that you brought in. Um, obviously, we closed the county parks and play, play areas, but no parking charges now in the town centre. Throughout the county, oh, throughout the county. Yep, all parking charges have been suspended for the time being. Obviously, we still want people to park safely, and there will be patrols if if. People are parking dangerously or obstructing, but in the main, the idea is to um, to allow key workers to get into the, get into town, get to their jobs, be doing their jobs and providing services to people without having to worry about finding change for parking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the other side of that is that that will potentially attract more people into town. It's free parking. I can pop in for an extra load of shopping. So that may be a double-edged weapon, but that's that's the decision as it's been made at the moment. Okay, and the markets, is that just trading on certain days or is that Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, is it? I think the Aylesbury market is trading on its usual days. It's much more limited. So you've got your, your food stores, but the... Um, the bricker back and the record stores and that, which are regarded as non-essentials, won't be operating. So market for just essential produce mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. So, um, there was a thing I've seen about blue bins. I don't know if you're aware of that. I think Wickham and Chilton area. Do you, are you aware of them not picking them up or...? There have been some areas where the, um, that's, those are the, the recycling bins haven't been picked up for a couple of weeks. I believe I heard on Martin Tett's blog, I think it was yesterday, that that service is being resumed. Okay. Here in Aylesbury Vale, they are still collecting the weekly, the two weekly refuse bins, the recycling bins, and the food waste. The only thing that stopped in Aylesbury in terms of collections is the garden waste. But the other thing is that the household recycling sites or tips are closed to the public. So uh, you can't, even though there's, there's plenty of time and, and nice weather to, for people to be able to clear their gardens, you can't take the waste to the tip at the moment, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot the Again, tip. the idea is to minimise contact between people and to stop the spread of the infection. Which is obviously duly noted. I mean, the people are going to the tip. They weren't. I think it was open, wasn't it, at the start? And then they noticed people weren't adhering to the 
to the instructions and so that's why they thought it was in general safety to close it that's right yeah i think things have been have got had to get tighter over the week and a half to two weeks that we've been under some sort of restrictions so another example is that the the town council which cuts the grass verges in aylesbury has now stopped doing that um, that's to again minimise chances of contact between our workforce and the public. So, uh, so there's less risk to, to both of those groups. So there's no gross cut, and so that we're going to see loads of grass all over the place. Um, what else has been cut from the from the Ellsby Town Council, sort of, or even Buckingham? Are you now? Is it not just Buckinghamshire Council, isn't it? There's no longer Ellsby Town Council. It's just Buckinghamshire Council. There's no longer Aylesbury Vale District. Uh, there is still the Town Council and there's Buckinghamshire. Yes, it's always been confusing with three different levels. We'll have to get used to two different levels, so there's still a little bit of confusion, right. particularly over the names. I'm going to write it down. Um, so we've got Buckingham Council, so Buckinghamshire Council. We've got the Aylesbury Town yeah. Council. Yeah, because I know I'm going to get confused. Aylesbury Town Council, which makes you mayor, correct? That's correct, yes, I'm the town mayor. You're the town mayor, yes. And um, what was the third one? Well, the, the one that existed until yesterday was Aylesbury Vale District Council. Right. So that was in the middle of the three layers, but that's now gone. That's now gone. So really it's only Buckinghamshire Council and Aylesbury Town Council, correct? That's right, Martin, yeah. Right, so what does the mayor and the Aylesbury Town Council actually do? Because I know most of the stuff that you do because I work well with you guys but what is it for the people out there and obviously if they've got any questions please comment and I will bring them to, to you Mike um, what is it actually the mayor does okay well the, the mayor's job is um, mainly civic and ceremonial there, there's very little power that goes with the job so normally I'm out uh, meeting groups of people who've done great things around the town, awarding prizes, shaking hands with people, posing in lots of photographs where people are celebrating their great achievements. Of course, none of that can happen at the moment. Um, the other main thing that the, the town council does, as you'll know, is puts on, puts on lots of events for the public um, during the spring and throughout the summer. Pretty much every weekend there's something going on to which the public can come for free and enjoy themselves. Of course, they're all not happening now. Uh, we've had to cancel our events program until the uh, August bank holiday. Uh, unless we hear otherwise, that's that's our hope that we'll so live in reopen the again. Still on the books. That was one of the questions I got asked. Um, it's still in the books. At it? the moment, we are intending that still to happen. Hopefully, that will be the chance for everyone to get together, having come through these difficult times, celebrate and enjoy a weekend of music together. Obviously, if the government tells us otherwise, if there are good reasons not to have gatherings, we won't be having it. We've got to follow the rules. But that's a few months away and we hope the problem will be sorted or on the way to being sorted by then and at least some aspects of normal life can have resumed. Well, the normal aspects of life will be nice. I'm, I mean, you know, live in the park, proms in the park. I've been covering it for the last couple of years. I'm, FBL does it free of charge so the taxpayer doesn't have to pay in any shape way or form in case anybody does ask. Um, <laughs> I, I find it quite amazing. It, I mean, especially proms in the park. I mean, we're live in the park. I mean, I'm just trying to allow people who obviously watch this broadcast or are currently watching. It is where a load of local bands do actually get to be literally centre stage. And I mean, we try and help them by promoting them and by live streaming it. So it's not local, it becomes global. Um, I mean, we've had information, yeah, um, communication from people in like Japan, Australia, South Africa, who have actually got to watch their friends or family members or or whatever on and they've, they've, they've loved it and I think it's a great thing that the Oswald Town Council does and I know Ruth works really hard and so does the rest of the team you know working with them and how hard they I mean that is a long weekend of work um, especially with problems in the park there's also church in the park on the Sunday so hopefully if this all 
the lockdown gets removed, hopefully that will be quite a, I think quite a big part. I mean, over 10,000, I think 13,000 people went last year. Um, I'd say it could be more. I'm sure it'll be, if it goes ahead, it'll be absolutely huge this year. And, and won't that be great? It was certainly at least, when I got up on stage to make a speech and I thought, there's a lot of people out there. And it was after I got back off the stage, someone told me there were more than 10,000 out there. I'm glad they didn't tell me that beforehand because I think I would have completely froze. <laughs> well, you can go back. But, uh, it is on the FBL channel. You know, you can look it up on YouTube. I've got the the, the whole day out on um, uh, Live in the Park and Proms in the Park. But you seem to do fine up there. You you are okay. <laughs> Thank you. You can go back. <laughs> it's <my> job, I <laughs> um, I, I, what was interesting about um, the the last act? Um, who was? Can you remember who the last act was? Hello, thanks, last year. Well done. I'm, I'm glad you, you remembered. Um, they basically, blew one of the things on the feed that we get. It, it literally topped out and shut us down, like sound wise. We had the pictures. So that they, they went, they obviously had done a spinal tap and turned it up to 11, I think. And I think it was the last <laughs> ever show, wasn't it, as well? So um, It was indeed, and it was quite some. Quite emotional as well. I would say. Yeah, well, well worth anyone watching back. It really was phenomenal. And it was phenomenal being there as well. So uh, a big thumbs up there for the Ellsbury Town Council for all the hard work. I mean, people only see what, what actually happens, but I actually see from, I mean, when we get there at, you know, whatever time on Friday afternoon, they're, they're, you, they've been there since Thursday. I mean, all the work that Ruth and the team do in the Ellsbury Town Council stretches months to get that done. Never mind the soapbox race and what, all the work they do with that and... St George's Day and um, uh, the Beach Day, you know, all that work that they do. Yeah, that was great on the sea, one of our favourites. We won't be able to have again this year. Yeah, and I won't be able to film it this year either. So um, I haven't been able to do it last two years because things have actually been um, a bit, um, we've been booked for other things. Um, keep on saying um, interesting. But yeah, a big thing, hopefully the lockdown happen, uh, you know, finishes. And that can all go ahead and hopefully we publicise that enough so people give them something to look forward to. Remember, you know, keep yourself inside. At the end of it, Ellsbury Town Council is going to do this big party called Live in the Park. And for two days, you'll be all amazed. And, and it's free as well. That's the amazing thing. Now, social distancing. Here's another thing. Um, two metre gap. Um, obviously, car parks, space in between. Um, it's still the recommendation, I believe. Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, that goes with the Ellsworth Town Council, yeah. obviously, sir. Um, I've covered your role, by the way. Now, that's good. Okay, well, the boat. Obviously, there's no weddings. Um, oh, somebody did, did put a message on yesterday, by the way. I think it was to do with um, in the hospitals or something about can't visit people for other underlying Ill illnesses that they may be in there for. Did you, are you aware of anything along the lines of that? I was just trying to find that. Um, question. I'm, I'm not sure of the actual rules on that, Martin, and wh or whether that's something that's being decided locally or, or it's national guide, guidance. But I think it, it's in, in keeping with the, the general rule that we don't want people who don't live in the same household in any close contact with each other in any situations if we can help it whether that's in supermarkets, hospitals, uh, in places of work, passing each other on the pavement when running or walking their dogs. I mean, interestingly, when I went, went out for a run the other day, I passed a couple of other runners and a couple of dog walkers. And um, in general, people moved, in one case, right to the other side of the road. And you would normally think, that's a bit weird, that's a bit odd, but it, we actually looked at each other great, gratefully and smiled because yeah. it's good to see that people are really paying attention and, and following the rules in most cases. Yeah, I have, I have noticed that, especially with walks out for anybody, they have said that people are keeping their distance, which is obviously the two metre rule. I'm, 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 while you were talking, I'm, I'm just trying to find that comment from, I think his name was Crotchet. Um, which would be a shame I can't find the actual question, but I, so we're not aware that there is any limitations for people visiting other people if it's not to do with the coronavirus. 
I'm not sure. I wouldn't like to guess because the rules are changing almost daily. And I think if anyone's in any doubt, then go on to Buckinghamshire Council or gov.uk or the NHS. Generally, all the, um, the public bodies' websites are absolutely crammed with information covering as many situations as they can. Um, I'd say if you're still in any doubt, don't go ahead until you have had the chance to check it out. I'd say better safe than sorry. Okay. Better the precautionary approach, I think, is what we need at the moment. I, thought, I mean, most people say, can they can they phone the hospital? Uh, you know, and I'm thinking mm, maybe they're quite busy. But then again, if there's, there's other wards in the hospital, so maybe they can give a call if they get straight down into that that ward, for instance. Maybe they can ask. I honestly don't know. I don't know how with hospitals being particularly busy, whether the phone lines aren't being um, manned as constantly mm. as they otherwise would be. Um, perhaps we could um, see if we can get someone from the NHS Trust uh, to come on your broadcast, Martin, and clarify some of those things. Jane O'Grady. Uh, I mean, she was on there with uh, Martin Tett. I mean, I will be um, looking um, to interview her at some point. Same as Martin Tett as well. I want to, I want to try and help, obviously, push the information out there for people to ask questions. I think we've got quite a good platform of FBL where we can do these interviews, providing we have internet that works. And then... Um, yeah, I, th I think it will help people gather. I think that a lot of information that you've supplied today will be very helpful. I mean, I was just trying to bring up the, the link to Martin Tet, if I can. Just one second. You might see it in my glasses. I brought up another screen. Um, if I put that on now in, in the comments, and if somebody wants to obviously ask any questions, I can ask you those questions. Let's have a look. I can put it in there. In terms I've got to do everything myself. It's nice when you've got other people to help you do the work. Um, so I'm just going to put that in the comments now so that um, people... So my internet, uh YouTube channel page. You probably won't be able to see this yet, but other people who are watching can actually see that now. So I've put, I've put a link up there for the YouTube page so that hopefully that will uh, increase the amount of people obviously going to that page and that will cover off obviously the, the Buckinghamshire Council and what they're actually doing and how they can they can help and I believe you like you say you can ask questions on there you can submit I know I did obviously to to ask to interview Martin Tet so and somebody did get back to me so if somebody is monitoring it you can Good. message there's also Rob Butler I wouldn't I wouldn't mind speaking to him as well not that I can seem to contact him through the Twitter but I will try our avenues just like um, I have been in contact with Rob Butler's office about some constituency issues today. Uh, one of his staff got back to me very quickly. So um, Rob Butler, like all MPs, is still, even though he's not in Parliament, is still working pretty hard, and I'm sure we'll be uh, happy to continue taking up issues on behalf of people. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try and send a message to his office, and uh, I mean, I tried to look on Twitter, and there was no way, but. I'll um, I'll trace that up and see if I can get him on here as well because um, I'm sure the people of Ellsbury would like to hear what he's got to say and help obviously promote his channels as well that he has out there. Um, I, I think is that is there anything else, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> I think the only other thing I'd like to say is a big thank you. There are huge numbers of volunteers coming forward, helping, giving things away doing free deliveries to, to people they don't even know, uh, working together throughout this crisis. And that includes many of our councillors and council staff uh, outside of their day jobs are, are volunteering for the NHS, the food bank, local charities, and hundreds and hundreds of ordinary people are doing that as well, which is fantastic to see. And I think when we come out the other side of this, hopefully we'll be a stronger community, much more used to working together and being supportive of each other, and that will continue into the future. So I'm really grateful to everyone that's doing their bit. Yeah, everybody is doing that. I mean, we did talk about this before, about obviously um, 
key workers being low, low, you know, minimum wage people working in, you know, in other areas where they they are putting their lives on the line. And to be fair, even if you're a volunteer, you are increasing, you know, or you know, your risk to obviously possible infection. And it's greatly appreciated everything that they do do. Um, that's really nice of you to say. That's that's really good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Mike, I'm sure we'll do another one, um, you know, and uh, keep up with the information. Thank you very much, and um, speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Bye-bye.